the channel. Now, I know I said on my last video that the next video would be settings on my new R3, but uh, events have kind of overtaken me since then because following a sudden rush of blood to the head, I have actually been spending again. I've been back to the camera shop and I'm going to share with you what's in this bag right now. So, as you can see, I've been busy the last few days. I've been back to the camera shop and spent again. Uh, the reason being is I've been on the internet a few times and I've been looking at how people are using the R3 camera and what lenses they're using to get the best performance for wildlife. And time and time and time again, the 100 to 500 RF lens is coming to the fore. So first of all, I have to say my first purchase wasn't that. My first purchase was another R3. Now, before you think I've gone insane, my wife is also very keen on photography and very successful. She's doing extremely well. Our, our kind of pathways have kind of mirrored each other for years now, since taking up, it was started off as a hobby uh, when we first sold our business and decided we needed something to fill our time in. And her success has been amazing. Everything I've done, she's done. Everything that we've done has mirrored each other. When I got into the natural press, she got the natural press. When I got my ARPS, Associateship of the Royal Photographic Society, she also got hers. The only thing that she does slightly different to me, where I've gone off to, onto the Facebook and on the channel and that type of thing, she's actually been putting her images into uh, international competitions. I'm going to put some of those photos up right now for you to have a look at. Her success has been staggering. She's had literally hundreds and hundreds of successes on the international scene, including many, many medals and an awful lot of gold medals, which are voted to be the best of the best on the international competition, sometimes against as many as 15,000 entries. So she's got a lot to be proud of. And I knew that when I got this, it would only be a question of testing it, and then she'd want one of these. And now she's got one. So now we're going to be competing with the same equipment. We don't really compete, but uh, it's all good fun. She wants to have a similar equipment to me because there's no doubts about it. The success I had when I was testing this was amazing. And the only thing that can make my bit better is... A nice 100 to 500 RF lens. That lens is amazing. I'm going to take it out now and show you. I've not even touched the box, so I can now have a look and see what's inside and uh, take the time to familiarise myself with it. It is an incredible lens. Looking at what other people have been getting with this lens, you get a nice cover by the looks of it. As usual, I think the, most of the instructions can be found online now. I don't think you get a particular book. You just get a little pamphlet, uh, maybe a quick start guide to get you going. You don't really need that because I've done so much research on the internet. But when you look at that, a carrying strap, and consider that I am technically replacing this lens for that. When I go abroad, this is what I'm going to be carrying in my bag. No more heaving massive weights around, being terrified at the airport that I can't get it stored above me. Because when I get all my equipment put together, it's a, well, both of us, it's a tiny sum, we've both got exactly the same gear. So I'm looking to find a more usable lens to get me abroad at a, a much lower weight. And this fits the bill. I can't believe how light that is. And put that onto the lighter camera, Bob's your uncle, fantastic. However, it's nice having the 100 to 500. The problem I've got then is with my 500 here, I've got a 1.4 and a two times extender. And I only use the two times extender when there's a lot of light around and the bird or the animal is static. It's not really great, to be honest, on this lens for anything that's moving. I've, I've given up on it, basically. The 1.4, I almost use all the time when I'm in Africa. I have it constantly and it just gives me a, you know, a great reach of 700 mil and that is brilliant. For the, I mean, you always want more, don't you? I mean, I, I wish I had 2,000, but there you go. You get what you're given. 
the other thing about this is fixed focal length that's at 500 this one here is 100 to 500 now that means that when something comes close with this lens I've then got to switch to my backup camera with the 7200 and that one will get me anything that comes close to the car. But it's a right faff one putting this huge lens down, picking the other lens up. By the time you got to the window again in the car in the Kruger, the, the thing's gone already. So this means I can come down uh, to 100, except when I'm using the next piece of equipment. Because I've invested in the 1.4 extender. And the 1.4 extender allows me to get a little bit more reach. It's saving up to 700. There is a price to pay on that, which I'm going to tell you at the moment, in a moment. <laughs> the price being about £550 in, uh, <laughs> in costs. For, uh, and the two times, in fact, is over £800. So I'm going to think very carefully before I decide whether to invest in the 800. But this, actually 1.4 extender, if you notice on there, it's got quite a long neck on there. So when you put it onto the back of the camera, it goes a long way inside. That means you can't actually put it on the camera until you've extended it. And then it'll go in. The end problem then is, when you bring it back, I'm going to just loosen this off a wee bit. You can only go back to 300. So this effectively becomes a 300 to 700 instead of a 100 to 500. Not a big problem because I think even 300, I can probably get stuff pretty near the car, but I'm still going to have to grab this if something is at right at the side of the car. And sometimes you're sitting there and basically a leopard line, as many times it happens, just wandered up past the car and I have to grab that pretty quickly to make sure that I can get that particular uh, photo. So there is a cost to pay. I'm willing to pay it. I haven't tried this yet. I am going to go and put it on my camera and I'm going to go into the garden and I'm going to actually compare the images to what I did a few days ago when I tested this out with me 500 Prime and I'd like to see what the difference is and I'm going to share with you what the difference is. So what I promise you next time when I've had the chance to, to, to play with this, in fact I've had this for two days and that just like when I got the camera and I had to wait several days before I use it, again I picked this up and yesterday I should have been up shooting and it was absolutely lashing down all day. So today is much better. I've had to wait again. I kind of do nothing else but wait, but <laughs> not to worry. I'm sure it'll be worth the wait. What I'm going to do next time, promise, is I'm going to set my camera up to what I think gets me the best images in the garden. And then on my next video, I'm actually going to show you in real time on the camera what those settings are. I'll bring the menu up and I'll show you the menu page by page to show you. It may not be perfect for you, but to be perfectly honest, if I'm getting great shots with the settings on this camera, um, you need to know them so you can try them and you can fiddle with them and adjust them as you will. But you know, I guarantee you, if I'm getting good shots on there, you know, if you've got the right equipment and you have the same needs as me, then by showing you the settings on my camera, it'll get you started quickly. And no intricate descriptions of the menu, just saying, that's what I do there, that's what I do here, that's what I said do there, you do that, and you possibly get some much better shots than you are now. So, let's get into the garden, and let's see what this can do. So we've moved outside now, and I'm in my garden, We've got a garden swing here. I've made a temporary hide by putting some camouflage netting up with a hole in the centre there that and poke my lens through to take some shots of my feed station. I did some the other day with my 500, so I'm going to be able to compare with my 500 Prime and what I'm getting today. Well, the difference is that today I'm going to be hand holding. I can't do that with my Prime lens, it's just too heavy. Not great for video either, you can't really video it on the 500. It, even on the tripod, there's still vibration and whatever. So I need to know today for the channel to see whether I can get good steady video that I can use in future videos. So what we'll do is we'll get in there, we'll get set up, see what we get. That's pretty good. That's just the first few shots. So, pretty much filled the card. So what I need to do now, take it indoors, get on the computer and see what the results are. 
Okay, so we're testing the 100 to 500 millimeter lens on my Canon EOS R3. What I'm going to try to do is kind of test it across the range. So I'm going to go right from the 100 through to 500. And we'll add the extender on, go through to 700. And we'll be going right through the aperture range as well uh, to see what the aperture is, what the shutter speed we need and what the ISO is going to be. So let's take a look at a picture. So this is one of the first images I took with the camera and the lens set up together and uh, I'm really really pleased with it. Lovely little blue tip on my setup. I have to explain from the start this was a very cloudy day. There was a lot of intermittent light going up going down so as you'll see from the ISO rate, ratings that uh, there's a lot of variation and uh, although I have to say it, the camera and the lens handled it very well. I also decided to do a little bit of videoing as well, just to see how good the camera was and I wasn't to be disappointed. One of the things I was most interested to see about was the action shots, just to see how well I could pick them up on the fly. And in the poor light, I think it's quite remarkable what this camera and lens combination have come up with. Another beautiful in-flight shot and I was amazed at how the camera eye detection instantly hit the eye as it was flying in and stayed right in there as the bird landed. Incredible. A rare few minutes of sunshine allowed me to get some nice pictures of these feeding. It took an awful lot of frames to get this shot because at 30 frames a second, I had to wade through an awful lot of images of it just sat on the perch before it eventually decided to take off. But worth the wait. This image actually kind of demonstrates why the 500 Prime is actually better than the 100 to 500. The background with the 500 Prime would have been completely blurred out. Uh, I'm going to show you an example of that a little bit later on. Uh, but I think I can live with that for the advantage of having a lens that is much less weight and it's much more versatile for closer shots. The dreaded sparrow that's just taken over our garden at the moment. We can hardly get any other species to come in. I just wish that they would uh, perhaps allow their fledglings to disappear instead of all gather up for next year for even more. I really quite enjoy doing the videoing. I'm not the greatest videographer because I don't have the type of tripod to get the steadiest of shots, but I guess as time goes on, I might learn or get a better equipment that will give me a steadier shot. I really, really like this shot. I'll tell you why. First of all, the distance between the camera and the birds was about 80 feet. And believe it or not, the actual eye recognition hit the chick's eye from all that distance and give me this lovely shot. I really cannot wait to get to the likes of the Kruger to see how it will perform in great light and on subjects that may well be a lot nearer to give me some wonderful shots to bring back to the UK. And I even managed to capture some video. <laughs> wonderful. And there was lots of opportunities to photograph the birds as they jockeyed for position on the feeders. It was really nice to see that one of a pair of collared doves who nest in our garden come down to the feeder to have a look to see what was available. And how lucky was I to get this little chap to drop in. Not a very frequent visitor to the garden, always welcome. And I'm going to use this image later on to show you the difference between my image here and the one that my wife took with her 500 Prime. And you can see basically the difference between the two images which will give you an idea of what you lose by going down to the telephoto lens. And yet another infrequent visitor and begin to think this is a lucky camera. There is absolutely no doubt in my mind that the 30 frames a second and the focus tracking make this an exceptional camera. And I simply couldn't resist taking the gear up to the local grouse moor to see just how well it fared with a windy day and the lots of grass flying around in front of the subjects. As you can see, it did a pretty good job.
Despite these grasses flowing back and forwards in front of the subject's eyes, somehow or other the eye tracking stayed there and didn't move. And it meant that by taking the 30 frames a second, there was always going to be a point where the head was actually going to be isolated from the grass. And that's exactly what happened. I tried not to think about the fact that it's coming up to the 12th of August, which is the start of the grouse shooting season. I quite like this one where the uh, adult is keeping watch whilst the youngsters huddle into the grass. And it's always nice to capture natural behaviour as the grouse calls out over the moorland. This nice shot of a meadow pippet carrying bugs uh, would have been really difficult with a 500 prime. And all of the action on the moorlands was overseen by hundreds of these little chaps. Everywhere to be seen, cute as anything, and always there to be photographed. So, what conclusions am I going to come to? As uh, far as I'm concerned, the only major advantage I can see over holding on to my 500 Prime is the fact that on certain shots, that's shots where uh, the background is not a long way from the subject, you get a much better bokeh, you get more blurring behind. As you can see in this example of the woodpecker, you've got my shot there and you can see my wife's next to it. And of course it is, it is much better. However, what's interesting to note that if there is a further distance behind the subject, then pretty much they match up. So I think on kind of balance for me, I think going over to the 100 to 500 with the extender, for travelling, certainly, it's going to be a much better advantage. You've got the, uh, the eye detection, you've got the 30 frames a second, incredible and low light. And there's a stream of other benefits that would be useful to me. So uh, the results of the test for me is to swap over from the 500 Prime and use my 100 to 500 with the R3. So I reckon it'll not be long before I come back with more images to share with you. But in the meantime, See you next time on the Better Photography Channel.